Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, back with the video on GNU Radio, and we're gonna look at how we can generate a quadrature amplitude modulation. Quadrature amplitude modulation basically it's a combination of amplitude shift keying and phase shift keying. Uh, this modulation techniques is quietly used in uh, 5G, 4G, and beyond systems. Also in WLAN, for example, 802.11ac. A very popular modulation scheme so we're gonna actually look at it how you can generate this modulation also we're gonna introduce some type of uh, hardware impairments based on my last video so you would actually see what happens during the transmission when you have different type of hardware impairments which is basically part of the hardware that you're using to transmit that signal and uh, what kind of a problem it comes uh, it arises when when you're dealing with uh, QAM signal uh, the higher the modulation scheme is going to be, you're going to compromise on the range. Uh, at the same time, it's very susceptible to noise and things like that because these points tend to get corrupted easily as compared to lower modulation, lower order modulation scheme. So let's just quickly look at it. Uh, let me just zoom in. So we're using two random sources, uh, which is being converted from int to float. And this is given as 0 to 4. Why? Because uh, I am generating the constellation size, which is 16, so I want to have 16 points. Uh, so 4 times 4 will give you 16 points. And into float value, basically what that means is actually giving you that order. So 2 raised to 3 is actually 8. So you're getting 8 points from here, 8 points from here, total of 16 points. That's the constellation size. That's all there is to it. Nothing fancy going on. This is how easily you can generate quadrature amplitude modulation or uh, uh, or any other modulation I have made a few videos on it as well but this is other way of doing it uh, to generate a, a, a quadrature amplitude modulation now this is going into a flow to complex block now after these values are being converted because you have something which is a random source uh, which is in green that is being converted into orange which is float now this float needs to be converted into complex because these blocks cannot be changed to any other color because this is already in complex now this is going into an add constant block this add constant block is actually giving you those constellation point at 0 0.5 uh, and minus 5 and 0 0.5 so this is actually going to orient your point on your constellation diagram just like in QAM so it's just going into a half point increment then you have a throttle block and definitely now you're going into a hardware impairment block now this hardware impairment block I made a detailed video on it you can go ahead and look at that video I'll, I will also leave a link as well for that video uh, these are just some of the things which are being controlled for example just like the last thing you have phase noise magnitude you have IQ magnitude imbalance what happens when you have an IQ imbalance for example I'll explain this a little bit more when we look at that quadrature amplitude modulation output in a constellation block. So basically, I is in phase, Q is quadrature. What happens when the magnitude changes due to some hardware impairment, due to transmission uh, of the signal? You might have a phase imbalance. You might have a phase change. What will happen in that sense? You What will happen when you have a Q quadrature offset in your uh, system? In phase, frequency offset. And then you will also have what will happen at third order distortion, uh, which we explained, I think, in my last video as well. So go ahead and have a look at it. Now, let's just simply run this flow graph, all right? So we're looking at visualizing this in constellation diagram uh, and in, in a time sync uh, graph as well. So let's just quickly look at it. Let me run this. Now. So by looking at it, as you can see, my constellation block size is 16. And how many points I'm seeing? 1, 2, 3, 4. And 4 times 4 is 16. So you have 16 constellation points. Remember that add constant block that is defining this. So from negative 5 to positive, uh, negative. Uh, so it's, it's going from, it's swinging from positive 0 0.5 and negative 0 0.5. This is where it's swinging from. Uh, this is just a time sync graph uh, we really don't care when we're looking at higher modulation schemes we really don't care about your time sync block we just care about our constellation block which you're seeing right here so you would see this is a very good constellation block diagram for a QAM quadrature amplitude modulation 
because it's a combination of Q uh, amplitude and phase that's why you have different points at different amplitudes. So for example you have one point here and and one point here uh, and one point here. So if you were to take it from the origin both of these guys are going to have same phase. Both of these guys are going to have same phase but will have different amplitude so you start packing more and more as compared to qpsk 16 psk you're you will always have a same amplitude when you're working with qpsk 16 psk 256 psk but you will not have a different amplitude but here if you were to make a circle you can clearly see this point and this point will have the same angle but will have a different amplitude that's why you start packing more and more bits in, in quadrature amplitude modulation scheme. Now what that is, is this. Anything that is horizontal, anything that is horizontal, we call it in phase. Anything that is vertical, this is quadrature. All right, so that's the distinct, uh, this, so anything. So if I were to call this point, this point would be what? This point would be minus 0 0.5 in phase, 0 0.1725, quadrature this is that the the the, the constellation uh, uh, point for this and this is just going to be an opposite of this all right so in phase and quadrature this is where we're defining in phase and quadrature so what will happen if i were to change the magnitude of this so let's just do it one by one and we'll see the effect of this on this constellation diagram let's say we start introducing noise this random noise can be generated for the hardware from the hardware itself which could be a thermal noise which is, would be coming in from from the electronics that is there what will happen to that constellation block let's just simply increase the noise in a system and let's see the effect of it as you can see now this is getting wider and wider these points are getting wider and wider and and if the noise is too much is too great it's going to start corrupting uh, the the next point which is next to it if this is let's say higher modulation scheme let's say i'm working with 256 uh, qam this will definitely destroy the next point so you won't be able to tell so this is basically the effect of that uh, phase noise as you can see you can hardly make out of what is that actual point was so this is that normal general noise which is present now let's look at the iq magnitude miss let's look at Let's look at IQ magnitude imbalance. What will happen if the magnitude of these points changes? It could happen during transmission. A lot of things can happen during transmission because the medium that we're working in is wireless or it could be the hardware itself when, it's, when you're trying to transmit that. It could be anything. What will happen to it? Let's change this. As you can see, the, now the magnitude, the actual magnitude was this. Now the magnitude started changing for this. The magnitude itself start changing for 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 these constellation points, and you can see the effect of this uh, here as well on your time time domain graph. All right? So let's just look at it. So you can see the magnitude is changing. This magnitude is different than what is being transmitted. Now let's change the phase imbalance. What will happen if the phase changes a little bit? This could this could happen due to hardware as you can see these constellation points are not like not like perfectly balanced like this they are getting imbalanced because my mag my my phase is changing you can see the effect of this phase change on my constellation block and this could happen so we're basically actually trying to introduce impairments in a transmission uh, in a qam transmission to see the effect now let's look at the eye disbalance Let's look at what will happen when I have a I and Q imbalance uh, offset. So let's see the effect of this. You see this? You will see the effect because your horizontal axis is basically your I, which is in phase now. And let's have a Q. So it will this these points will start moving vertically, which is a Q offset. That would definitely change. My constellation block and you can see clearly see the effect on this time domain block as well now uh, what about let's say let's let's do everything zero and let's go back to this uh, being uh, okay now let's start including third order uh, third order distortion what will happen to this 
This could come from the semiconductor. These these are just intermodulation product that that takes place. Now, this would would happen when you start introducing third order distortion into your QAM signal. So this is how these hardware impairments affect your 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 transmitted your modulated signal. Uh, if it's digitally modulated, generally, uh, and 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 then you need to take care of this. So I hope you like this small tutorial on QAM and hardware impairments combined, how these will take an effect. Oh yeah, I forgot about frequency offset. So let's just quickly look at frequency offset. All right, so this is in a, all right, so let's look at frequency offset. Not much of a difference in frequency offset. Uh, because this is basically the phase version, but this is basically generally a way of, of looking at uh, QAM uh, when, when, when you have different type of impairments that are there. So I hope you like this small tutorial. If you have any questions, uh, leave it in the comment section. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. And thanks for watching.